Hi everybody, so today I wanted to give a quick rundown of a cool strat that I saw Ty Lu running in the ESL1 clone offline qualifier. Um, it's a B fake on cash, but I think the way they kind of uh, set up the fake and also the way they kind of execute it is pretty interesting. Uh, and so I'll talk you through why it's effective, why they can kind of set their team up on the T side in this way, uh, and also what they could have done better to execute it, I think, in a more effective way. So as we can see here, the round's been running for a few seconds uh, and immediately Tai Lu have made their intentions clear by spreading out into this default that involves Attacker and Captain Mo moving over to the squeaky door area. Somebody, Didi and Fancy moving over to take control over the other side of the map where Somebody and Fancy will be the dedicated B players and they'll take control of B main and Didi spots mid to make sure there's no garage push but also helps uh, with, the, with the B main map control. Now the reason Tyloo set up in this format is because they're going for a B fake and they're going to attack A through the squeaky door. Now the reason they can afford to set up in this way, despite the obvious weaknesses of this default, a potential A main push, there's nobody watching this, nobody really watching a mid push, Didi's going to be in trouble if Cloud9 commit two players uh, with a pop flash into garage, or counter boost. This kind of area of the map is the most weak. At least Didi's kind of spotting a mid push just in case anyone from Cloud9 tries to creep into Garage. The reason that Tai Lu can open up in this default is because they know Cloud9 are running a double AWP setup. Cloud9 are running a double AWP setup with Stewie dedicated to the A site and Skadoodle dedicated to this kind of area of B. He's playing in the Z connector but also rotates into tree room uh, depending on what the attacks are. Now, the reason, like I say, this is Tai Lu basically un reading their opponent, understanding there's a double AWP set up, and understanding that with two AWPs, Cloud9 are not going to want to push. Cloud9's defense is very static, and so they can afford to leave certain areas of the map exposed with their default, because it's very unlikely that Cloud9 are going to push into those areas. Now, if we... Let's just make sure my cursor's over by the demo thing. Now, if we resume the, uh, the demo quickly here, and we let it run for a little bit... Cloud9 uh, stayed fairly, fairly static on the defense as is expected. Tyloo moved to the map control. Now, what's interesting from Cloud9 here is they see the smoke put up from Tyloo, which is a smoke to allow them to get into Toxic, and they react accordingly. They throw two Molotovs into that Toxic area in an attempt to flush someone out. Now, <clears throat> let's take a quick look at the map overlay, and you can see why Tyloo and Cloud9 behave in the way they do. So. Cloud9 see this smoke set up by Tai Lu to allow them to cross into the toxic area. Cloud9 then react by throwing two mollies into the toxic area. Now what this is designed to do is this is designed to flush Fancy out if he's playing further forward into the toxic area. And Shroud has a good shot. Let's just do that quickly. And Shroud has a clear line of view from here. A uh, pretty low risk strategy to see if anyone crosses back. Not only is he going to get information, he's going to get a free chance at a pick at the start of the round. Now, what's good here from Tai Lu is that they, again, react appropriately to Cloud9's reaction. They throw a flash, make sure Shroud is flashed so that Fancy, if he needed to, could cross back into Toxic. Cross back out of Toxic, sorry. Unfortunately, the Molotovs don't cover the whole area. They only cover part of it. But, I mean, it was a good idea from Cloud9, and it's one that I uh, I think I appreciated and, and was worth a go. Now, if we resume the demo from this point, this is when kind of stuff starts happening. Now, if we just get double speed running for a little bit here, and then I'll pause it at the next point uh, when stuff starts to get important. Now, what you'll start to see here is... Uh, this is the moment when Tyler decides to commit. They chuck a smoke onto the site, and here we go. Somebody... And just after him, Fancy, both sack themselves to the push, basically. They both essentially committed to, to dying on that push. Um, and basically, this is to sell the fake. Now, what I want people to note quickly, just before we resume the devil, demo, devil, demo, is Didi moves back into the garage area. Now, have a look at cloud Nine's setup at this point. We can already see Attacker and Captain Mo have started to push through the squeaky door area to A, this is where their attack's coming from, and DD's rotated to Garage to watch for rotations. Cloud9 are in a very difficult position once Stewie2k goes down in sight on A. Skadoodle, Shroud, and Slemmy are all really, really far away. Skadoodle's up in heaven, 
Shroud and Slemmy are still on B site and no one started to rotate at this point. There's a very long rotation through CT for these players or through Z connector into mid and up highway. Now the linchpin of this play here and what makes the Tyloo attack possible, because as you can see they're in a 3v5 here, these are very unfavorable numbers, is they need to level the playing field. They, It's a very high risk strategy because they're relying on both of their entry players on A, staying alive and killing Stewie, and they're relying on DD to catch the rotation in middle. Now what we'll do here is we'll uh, continue the demo again and watch it a little bit. Um, I'm going to need to very quickly switch to attacker here. Now, they get the entry into the site. Because it's an orb, they know there's a decent chance that that entry is going to happen. And uh, we just missed it there. But if we switch back to DD now, we can see that DD managed to catch somebody in mid. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see it. I'm not going to go back on the demo because I've tried to record this about 10 times. Not that I'm salty or anything. And now we'll move back to the take on a site we'll go back onto mo now what i want to do is i want to pause the demo just as cloud nine start to rotate here now this is the area i want to emphasize for people just so that we can see how the retake is going to start to play out now there's two ways the tyloo can kind of play this the first way is the way that they've chosen to play it which is they've chosen to leave dd lurking in mid and then they've set up a fairly standard two-man post plant hold on the a site captain mo and attacker can both have both have angles where they can watch people crossing into the site they can also crossfire for each other in these two positions and so it's a fairly standard two-man crossfire not the strongest setup i don't think with the three men that they had alive what i would rather have seen here is dd cloud nine are already aware that dd's lurking in mid he got the kill on nothing he should fall back at this point run into a main and tyloo can set up a much stronger post plan what they can do is they can have dd fall back into a main have captain mo and attacker play together on the site maybe even have attack captain mo stick in squeaky so that he can quickly push out to trade with attacker should attacker face any problems on the site and i feel like that overall would have been a stronger setup than what they did i can understand why they've done what they've done they've essentially tried to eliminate any any push from a main and squeaky from cloud nine so that they can just focus solely on the sites and they give Didi a chance to get a backstab or a flank going if the retake does happen i just think it's a lot riskier in the 3v3 particularly if you look cloud9 still has some utility left on slemmy and they still have utility themselves i would rather they just sat on the site with the with the three flashes and molly that they have i think it's more effective if they just turtle up three men on the site with with two kind of playing in this area and and dd playing in a main i think that would have been a stronger after plant positioning and probably would have won them the round as it is unfortunately if we watch the demo play out here we're gonna see dd try and push out to get the kill on Slendy. he dies that's unfortunate i think if dd gets that kill tyloo win the round it was a a higher risk play than i think they needed to take now, if we resume and we switch back to... Is it Attacker? Yeah, it's Attacker. Now, this is the second mistake that Tyloo make and the second play where they could have actually won the rounds. Now, in a 3v2, they need to make a play here. They're at the numbers disadvantage. They need to do something to try and bring it back to a 2-on-2. Two -two. Here. Here's where they make the mistake. Unfortunately, that pop flash comes half a second too early or Attacker peaks a little bit. I don't know if it was communication or what it was that caused the issue there. Either attacker needs to peek well before that flash pops so that Cloud9 are either looking at where the flash came from or Cloud9 are already turning away to avoid the flash or he needed to wait half a second so that the flash had actually popped. You can say again it's similar with the DD thing in mid. It's kind of execution there. If he makes the shot, it's fine. It's down to a 2 on 2. It's probably even down to a 2 on 1 because Mo got the first kill on Slemmy. Mm, it's difficult to say that it was necessarily anything wrong with the idea but the execution was pretty poor and then from this moment it's fairly simple for cloud <laughs> they're in a two on one the bomb wasn't cleanly planted for a main anyway and tyloo lose the round now what i kind of want to emphasize about that afterwards is just the the lengths to which tyloo went to sell the fake they had three men on the b site at the start of the round when the fake started throwing in nades two players actually running into the site and sacking themselves just dying outright it really sells the fake for cloud nine so that no one starts to rotate at all even their mid player isn't really thinking about the a site and isn't really even thinking about a flank 
it's in a very strong setup from Tyloo. It's risky because they basically needed everything else to go perfect. They needed to get the entry with no reply on A, and they also needed DD to get that lurk kill in mid. But I think it was an interesting strat nonetheless, and it's a, it's a kind of strat that you won't see very many NA or EU teams use because it's quite high risk. If you enjoyed that breakdown, guys, please like and leave a comment on the video, uh, and maybe I'll do more of these in the future. See you around, guys.